Do you want to pass the Azure AZ305 exam? You're not alone because more and more people are actually looking to get the certification and get a job as an Azure Solutions Architect. The 305 exam covers a broad range of topics, so you might feel a little bit concerned about how much you're going to need to learn. But don't worry, we're going to go through everything that you need to know about designing Azure infrastructure solutions. So we're going to cover who is this exam for, the difference between this and other exams, what topics it covers, and whether it's worth it or not based on where you're currently at on your Azure journey. So let's start with who is this exam for. It's a certification for solutions architects that design both cloud and hybrid solutions on Azure. So who is a solutions architect? A solutions architect acts like a bridge between business problems and technical solutions. They work with companies to integrate their new technologies, consult on the value of various solutions, and then educate their teams on the actual implementation. If we think about it practically, for example, guiding a bank through the integration of an AI chatbot on their website, or helping a company adopt a new cloud solution. In these cases, solutions architects act as trusted advisors who make it all happen. So if you're an Azure solutions architect, you're going to be doing this using Azure services. And this is the reason why being an architect requires you to know so much, because it's a role that demands hands-on experience with Azure services and also software development in general. And if we're talking about the 305 exam, now you may pass it without that hands-on experience, let's say if you're lucky. But if you're looking to get a job as a cloud solutions architect, the certification alone won't be enough. So normally you're going to go for this exam once you're already working as a cloud solutions architect or if you have experience with Azure services. I'd say that if you're acting as an admin or a data engineer or DevOps engineer and if you have that experience with infrastructure admin work, then the 305 exam is suitable for you because it will take you a step further in your career and it's going to help you with new job opportunities. But if you're a complete beginner, the AZ305 might not be the best certification for you. Because if you're a complete beginner, you have better ones to go for. And that depends a lot on your area of expertise. Like for example, the DP100 for data scientists, the DP203 for data engineers, and of course the AZ104 for Azure admins. And then after some time in those roles, then you can take the 305 exam. That's when it will come in handy, because potentially employers care more about the experience that is confirmed by an exam rather than the other way around, because having a certification doesn't confirm experience. The 305 is actually the final exam towards the Azure Solutions Architect Expert certification. So in order to be a Solutions Architect Expert, Azure requires you to have the Administrator Associate Badge, which is the 104. This is a prerequisite, and then passing the 305 exam actually gets you the Solutions Architect Expert certification. So if you're a complete beginner, I'd suggest that you first become a specialist in an area such as data science, data engineering, or AI engineering. And only after some time in those roles, then if you're looking to become a solutions architect, then you can take the AZ104, the Azure admin exam, because this one is actually more practical and it tests for how you're doing things from an infrastructure admin perspective. And only afterwards, the AZ305 will actually earn you that precious solutions architect expert badge. The 305 compared to the 104, test for what components you need to use in order to build Azure solution. So by the time you're actually going to take the exam, you're going to have enough experience to pass it with a decent amount of study. Now, if you're thinking whether you have the skills to take the exam, what I do recommend is that you simply take a practice test from Azure Learn, because these practice tests are not going to be a direct match or even similar to the types of questions that you're going to get in the real test, because the real exam questions will be harder and they're going to be a lot more complex. But what the practice tests help with is to see what topics you need to learn more about, because they're built around the topics in the learning paths. And that's how they help. They let you know exactly what you don't know so that you can learn about all of the services that are required for this exam. And speaking of this, at getthatbadge.com we offer practice exams to help you prepare for cloud certification exams. We currently have both Azure and Databricks practice exams and we're adding more every week. So definitely check it out because if you're looking for a way to support this channel, this is a way. You support Decision Force and you support yourself by learning a new skill. So is the AZ305 certification worth it? I think it is, but going for it depends a lot on where you're currently at on your Azure journey, because as a beginner, you should go for specialist certifications like DP203, AI102, DP100, and there are a lot to choose from. But if you're already specialized, the 104 and the 305 exams can give you a boost and signal the fact that you can design cloud solutions on Azure. So if you've decided that you're going to take an Azure certification exam, whether it's this or another, Check out this video in which I talk about how to pass any Azure Cloud Certification exam. 
I talk about the exam experience and the strategy that I follow when I take these exams. I really hope that this video helped. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.